Hello YouTube, this is the Toad here. Uh, I'm going to do a video on adding a UHF system to the Devo 7 radio and also to the Walkera well, Runner 250. Um, me and a lot of my friends have this quad. Um, I'm going to do a full review on it because it does have some serious weaknesses, but at an entry level price, I believe I paid $160 for it with the radio and everything ready to fly, which it has now been completely modded and and even going to be modded further, so that will be in a video series also. But one thing that I definitely wanted to do was I wanted to increase the range. I didn't want to have to worry about flying in the woods and losing my connection due to trees or whatnot. And granted, the 2.4 gigahertz is a good spectrum. Um, this transmitter is 100 milliwatt is what they're claiming. That's out of the box at the 2.4 gigahertz range. Um, one thing I did notice that I had to do was my particular radio you can go into the settings and change it clear up to a hundred watts hundred milliwatts so I did that that increased my range but it still was not enough for me once I got deep into the woods or you know around a 1.5 kilometer range then I started to question and started to lose connection at times uh, my friends had theirs fall out of the sky one of them, we found out that that was due to the antenna, the original antennas being damaged. But that was just not something that I wanted to worry about. So I scoured the entire web looking for connecting a UHF system to the Devo 7 and to the Walkera Runner. And of course, there was nothing anywhere about it. So I have gone and done the guesswork for, for any of you guys that want to do that. What I have here is the EVUHF transmitter system. And this is 500 milliwatts, uh, I believe low. When you're on low is like 200, and then you can boost clear to high to regain in case you would lose lose uh, connection. Um, you also have a bind and fail safe right here, which is very nice because when you plug it into the radio and connect it all up, you can just push this fail safe button. And if you already had a fail safe set on the Devo, Devo 7 for the Walkera Runner, um, it will automatically copy that fail safe. Or you can have your quad in the air and say put it into a slow turn where it's starting to turn and descend and you can push the fail safe button when it is doing that and it will automatically make that your fail safe. So that's another added option um, as far as setting fail safes that you can do with this that you can't really do with the radio. Um, what I got with the radio is this, this all, it comes with this right here which is a JR plug. And what you do is you connect the serial port, where it says RCTX. You plug that into there. And then this is your mono jack, which is used for all the Spectrum and JRs. And it's also used for the Devo, any of the Devo radios. If you flip the radio over here on the back side, you're going to see on your left-hand side, you'll see a little cover that says DSC. Now what that is, that's your trainer port, and also if you're using... A radio and a simulator that's where you would plug it in to connect to your PC um, this radio as most radios today sends a PPM signal that's the encoding signal that comes from the radio when you use that trainer port jack so what it does is you are not changing any of the settings on this radio a lot of people think that you have to you know, go in there and, and make a new model which you could do that if you wanted to change something or tweak it and make a new model but you can literally take this and in, in maybe like 15 minutes, depending on what work you have to do as far as like the cables. Um, but it is doable to set this all up in about 15 minutes. So let's get into that and I'll show you what's going on with it. So the first thing you want to do is connect your cables. I also made this cable with an XT60 to the uh, correct power plug size for the transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in there. And I bought a couple of these little clips. And I originally had this mounted on the back with the Velcro, as you can see, and it was flat down to it. The only problem with that is a lot of these antennas are meant to be vertical. When you're using UHF, you want it pointed towards the sky. And so I've seen a lot of people on videos, and then I've watched people like I Be Crazy in his video series, which was just absolutely phenomenal if you want to get into antennas or anything long range, any kind of video system, I highly recommend him to you guys. If you haven't heard about him, check him out. He's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so he was saying that since the 
the dipole antennas need to be vertical. I put these clips on here. And what that enables me to do is, I'm just going to pop this right on here. Let's slide it aside a little bit. And I will go ahead and take my JR plug, which also works for the Devo series, and I'm going to plug it into the trainer port. Okay. And another thing that I did is I went, instead of using, this is the original antenna that comes with this. Um, I wasn't too happy with that, so I got uh, a better antenna, which is this diamond um, diamond antenna. I believe it's the, what is it? Let me look real quick here. I think it's like the 771. Yeah, SRH771. And it is a completely vertical antenna. Um, there are some dipole antennas that, you know, there's a turn style, and if you look into that, you'll see all the different options. Um, the first thing I would do is if I got a UHF system, especially um, the Easy UHF, which I'm really enjoying, by the way, is I would take this and I would toss it away, and I would get at least one of these or a straight um, semi-rigid dipole or w one of those from I'd be crazy or something like that and use that. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this. And like I said, I was going back to the clips. The reason I used the clips on there is so that I could turn this, and then I just take my old antenna, which is not transmitting anything. Once this is plugged into the, to the trainer port, that signal is completely going into this, and it shuts down the uh, transmitter in the original DVA 7 as far as you know projecting the 2.4 gigahertz. So it's no issue to take this and use this to hold it up. I hold my radio in a slight bit of an angle, when it's on my lap, so that's giving me ver completely vertical with that on there. Okay, so that's very important. And I've definitely tested that in range, and it is a big deal. Another thing is, I did not want to use the battery, and I have uh, a life battery in here. Um, I didn't want to risk not having maximum power going to the transmitter. So what I did is, as you can see, I added some Velcro here, and I'm using a 3S. 2200 milliamp battery and I'm just going to put this on the back of the radio so that sits there and that also the reason I put it down at the bottom is it makes it nice and level and it helps the radio just stand it's a very simple life um, so that's basically all you're doing to the radio um, when you connect it which you'll see here in a little bit you're going to connect the XT60 and then you're going to turn on the radio and that that part's done it's it's literally that plug and play for the easy UHF transmitter system on the Devo 7. Um, as you can see, a piece of cake to hook up. Now, I'll show you the other cable that came with this system is the head tracking unit. And I have not used this yet. Uh, I have not looked also to see if the Devo 7 radio here supports head tracking out of the box. I don't know if it does. I do know that easy UHF transmitter automatically supports head tracking even if your radio does not have it built in I believe and if I'm understanding that correctly somebody can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong with that but um what you do is you would take your HT serial port here and you plug this in there and then plug the other end connect it to your head tracking unit and put that on your goggles and then if you have a pan and tilt system on your copter or your your aircraft or whatever you're flying then you can use the head tracking to control that servo and look around. So that's a very nice feature too, having the head tracking built right in to the actual easy UHF transmitter makes that very, very easy. So we'll move this cable out of the way. And here is the Wilcara runner. And what I did is I uh, figured out the exact process for the to connect all the pins. Um, one thing that I am going to look into, and I'll update this video if I find out it to be the case, you can on some, especially multi-Wii multi, multi -Wii flight controller systems, which this is based off an early multi-Wii, and you can find some videos on that. But um, a lot of them, and especially the newer flight controllers, you can do what's called a PPM or straight S bus, which enables you to just connect one cable and run it, and you're completely done. Um, I have not been able to find the information on that. I am in contact with Walkira, see what I can find out, and I may do that. So uh, if I do that, I will give you an update.